I see red lights on my side. So I guess now we're recording. Uh huh. Are we talking directly to our audience, who we assume has some level of audiencing? <laughs> I'm, I assume that they have some level of audiencing, yes. All right, well, presumably they have some sort of headset. Hello, viewer. Hi. We're hoping we lined you up so that all the stitching error is going to be right here, and both of our faces are going to be kind of lined up. How do we look? How do we look? Yeah. Yeah. Do we have? Do we have? Are we depth? very three D? Um, we should show the camera set up. That. So this is the camera that we are shooting with. This is you. Uh, this is the previous version. There's much more duct tape involved. So there's two cameras on the top and two on the bottom. And these are the ones that are doing sort of um, the flat part of the top. And then this ring around the center. Um, Vi's going to take a selfie of you. So yeah, the ring around the center does the 3D. Yeah. And it's made out of lots of GoPros. And you can go on our website at LVR.com if you want to learn how to build one. Because I put a demo up there. And if you look directly 180 degrees from my face, you will see a GIF of the website. OK, I'm going to come over here and make sure you can actually see yourself with all your happy blinking lights. So when you face me, you get that pair of camera, that stitch around to here. Uh, so basically, this is creating two spheres. And so um, like the, what is this? This left eye is going to be stitched to this part, this left eye, for one of the spheres. And then this right eye is going to get stitched over here to this camera's right eye. And so it's stereo around for 360 degrees around, but yeah. not on the top or the bottom so much. Because of mathematics. Because math. Yeah. So we decided that we would make a talk show because what better thing to do in VR than talk about VR? It's so meta. Whoa. Yeah, I guess we should talk about some of the, the challenges right now. So I guess the easy thing is you just set up a camera in one spot. Right now, you don't have to worry about motion sickness. You're just here chatting with us. We don't have to do fancy graphics or anything because the software isn't so compatible right now. With fancy graphics. With doing fancy graphics, right? <laughs> this is going to get stitched together using one program, distorted using another program. I feel like we should do a quick rundown of hardware, software, headsets, and things. So one of the great reasons to make video is because presumably video is going to be compatible with everything. Yes. Right? We don't have to worry about, oh, this is a game that's only going to be available for one platform. And then if that platform goes evil, which, you know, why would any platform go evil? But if for, you know, some, some vague reason, speculation. Like if maybe Facebook bought one of them or something. No, and that would never happen. I don't know. But this is where I'm going to mess my makeup up. Yeah. Oh, and then we have to have a segment on... Uh, Oculus compatible Hair fashion, hair and makeup. We need to get in a professional for that. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll have Oculus. That'll be a segment. It'll be the format of the show. <laughs> Tweet us your segment ideas segment. for segments. All right, so this is the DK1, uh, which you could put googly eyes on. The DK2, which we do not have any in the office right now. Mm -hmm. um, Later. We did last future. week, and we will next week, but we don't at the moment. Um, the DK2 has IR sensors, so the googly eyes would get in the way of that. So this first version essentially just lets you look around the center of a sphere. Um, but the new um, DK2 has an IR tracker that is a, like a little camera that looks at you. So you can do things like, instead of just turning your head, you can like look over something or like z sort of zoom in on something by leaning into it and like focusing on what you're looking at. But you can't do any of that with the the previous version. All right, which is a problem for film. Also, I'm noticing you're so good at talking to the camera because you actually <laughs> vlog all the time. I do, used yeah. to this idea of like, hello, audience, I'm talking to you. <laughs> I'm, um, I'm wondering if we cleaned the lenses before we started. I thought I wiped them. They always look smudgy, no matter what you do to them. The camera always looks smudgy. It's OK, because we're assuming that the lenses on your DK2, which maybe you're watching this with, are also smudgy and scratched. <laughs> so it'll make up for itself. But yeah, right. so if you've already scratched the lenses on your DK2, we feel your pain. And we just wanted to make sure you felt included, so we made sure that it was smudgy. Mm -hmm. Now, the worst is when one eye is smudgy and one isn't. And you're, you're like, like oh, oh god, yeah. smudges in 3D. <laughs> <laughs> right. But for film, this, sorry, back to the, the DK2 thing. Yes. Right? Because when you only have head tracking, which the Oculus has, do we have a cardboard? I know we have a cardboard it's in It's in here. that box underneath the desk. Oh, right look. There. You can still see me. I'm still on camera. I know. It's so this is not right. a, oh, there we go. There we go. OK. OK. This is a cardboard. So the DK1 only has um, 
what do you call that kind of head tracking? Rotational, Pos yeah. positional. It doesn't have it doesn't the have other kind. Leaning. Leaning, leaning head tracking. <laughs> so These uh, are very technical words. Right, so if you have a device like this, or like this, basically, it has it has relative tracking. Yeah, it has, it like has a no idea. In it. It, it, yeah, it just it doesn't know. It doesn't know where it is or what it's doing, except for relative to itself as it moves around. So this thing, this is the Google Cardboard. You strap in your phone, and then you go like that, um, and you can see through the lenses. So basically, your resolution is going to be the resolution of your phone screen. Uh, which actually this version of this phone is incompatible because Verizon decided just not to update Android ever again for this model of phone. Although I find one problem I find with the cardboard is the lenses just don't fit my face that well. You have to have like a particular face size to get the cardboard to work like just perfectly for you. Yeah, this is also kind of a problem with all of these devices, yeah. but hopefully, I mean, you can adjust these things in software and hardware to some um, degree. Are we allowed to talk about wearality? Yeah, we can talk about wearality. So wearality is a new, another startup that's um, coming out with hardware headsets in the next, what, like eight By the end minutes? of the year. By the end of the year. Like everyone says, by mm -hmm. the end of the year. Um, and they have a very wide field of view. So that's one of the headsets I have found that um, it fits a lot of different people's faces very well. Um, we did notice last time we, uh, the, when we used the prototype that the 3D has to be adjusted a lot more in that headset though, but that's in the software side, so that's a little easier to adjust for than like cardboard where the lens is just, if that isn't the size of your face, then you are out of luck. Yeah, uh, although in theory, I mean, it's made out of cardboard. You can, you can construct your own model where you have it fit exactly to your face. That's true. Hopefully, um, the Oculus will have some adjustments because the, the interpupillary distance for people, it varies by like a few centimeters. Yeah. It's significant. Although we found in our tests that like, it doesn't matter to, like you can change the distance a little bit and your eyes can compensate, but mm -hmm. it's, it's an eye strain and the longer you stay in there, the more an eye strain it is. And yeah. Another thing that I noticed about the wearality helmet, or what are we calling them? Helmets, I guess. Um, <laughs> headsets that I liked a lot is that the, the lenses um, curve away from your eyes. So, a lot of us who wear glasses or have long eyelashes, you'll notice when you're wearing the Oculus that like it touches your eye in a creepy, horrible way. Um, but yeah. their lenses, it's just it's a simple thing. But yeah, they don't touch your face at all, which makes it feel a lot more comfortable. Right, whenever I'm putting on the Oculus, I'm like smashing my eyes into the lens, which <laughs> smudges them, and then you have to take it off and clean the lens, which of course scratches the lens, and then you put it back on your eyelashes. Yes. Right, the these were designed by people without eyelashes. Yes, I agree who don't have girl hair and who do not have long eyelashes. Yeah, and who, who don't wear makeup, which I guess I don't either, but it's, right, a lot of, so, okay, Morpheus, does that have this kind of? No. So Morpheus has like a, um, you know, like a bike helmet thing where you like tighten it to your head mm -hmm. and then the, the headset itself sort of like hovers in front of your face. And they've done some sort of weird black magic where it like has a lot of airflow inside of the mask. So it doesn't actually feel, it's not touching your skin really. Like you can feel it on your face, but there's a lot of air and it doesn't have this like ski goggle effect where you like sweat and fog up the whole inside of the mask constantly. Right, it's like you don't want to use that after the sweaty person uses it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> the Morpheus doesn't have that problem. But that means you each have to buy your own. That's true. No sharing. No sharing, because that would eat into profit margins. But with Morpheus, is there like light leakage? Does that take away from the I margin? didn't notice any light leakage, but I was doing it in a booth at GDC. So it was like in a setup environment. It was kind of like dimly lit. I actually really know. Is my hair going to brush my mic? These are all things I never think about because I <laughs> never do on camera stuff. I don't, I've never used a lapel mic before, so now I'm worried about like crushing it with my hand accidentally. Right. I've only used it in like live situations where you can hear the feedback from yourself live and don't have to worry that maybe <laughs> you're, it's off the whole time, you know, like giving a talk or something where it's just, that's true. You're hearing it. They're, they'll fix it in, you can't fix it later. <laughs> like people are right. listening. Right, you can tell when, when like it's exactly right where you're saying like all your P's <laughs> and every time you say P, it's like poof. 
and you hear that live, and you're like, oh, I have to start saying my P's over here, and be like, oh, this project we're working <laughs> on. <laughs> project. <laughs> yeah. That is seriously what it's like sometimes. So Morpheus also has positional IR, like, you know, all that Yeah, stuff. it does also have, like, a forward-facing camera that tracks you. Um, I did, they also had, the, um, we were using the PlayStation Move controllers, which mm -hmm. is the weird ones that have, like, the big ice cream ball lights on the top. Um, and they were fine, and they definitely felt better than using just a PlayStation Move controller without a headset on, because you can't actually see how ridiculously you look. But it, there was a lot of um, sort of like interference. Like with the DK2, yeah, the positional head tracking is just so convincing. Yeah. This is kind of the crisis we're having right now, because uh, with, with regular film, even with stereo film, you just can't, you can't get that. Uh, and the question is, is that a novelty? Do we really like that? Is that going to be good for games? But sometimes for video, you just don't really care. You're happy to sit and watch regular stereo where you move your head and it's, you can't actually move your head around things. Because like, what's the, what is the user experience that you want? Like, some things, you know, there's a lean backness to video where you don't have to actively do something the entire time. Something can just be displayed for you and you can watch it. And with this video, you, you can have a little bit of head motion and like look around if you want, but you're not forced to you know, like do all of this crazy action with your head just because it's possible to do that in games with, this, with the new IR tracking or. Hmm. Yeah, I'm kind of seeing a, a split coming between the passive and active side of things. Yes. Because not everything needs to be active all the time. It's yeah. not like everyone wants every sort of interactivity. I call it the let's play effect, where sometimes you want to play a game and you want every peripheral and every interactivity and it's as real as possible. But sometimes you want to actually sit back and yeah. absorb. And like different content is like better in, in those different situations. I don't want to, I don't want like every YouTube video I ever watch, I have to like actively be doing something like during it while I watch the video, I would like something to be more relaxing or. Right. People like watching movies and watching people and watching things, especially when you have presence and you feel, dear viewer, like you are right in front of us right now <laughs> joining our conversation because Do we- Do you feel like you're here? We value your input. <laughs> we should actually like, do, do we have audience input? Do they email us? Do sure. we care what they say? They should follow us on Twitter. Oh yeah, they can follow us on Twitter. Twitter is a really great, bleh. Twitter is a really great place to give us feedback on this kind of thing, because that is where we are. Yes, at the moment, until it does something to make me mad. <laughs> I don't know, all the things are going evil. What is Twitter gonna do to make you mad? I don't know, they started having like weird ads sometimes, and they will straight up lie to you. They'll be like, your friend is following Britney Spears. Why don't you follow Britney Spears? And they're like, oh my gosh, that's... It's like, that should be slander. Like, you're saying that about that particular person. Uh, that's a thing. This is not a thing about Twitter. Um, right, so, so if you can only look around, where video is is perfect for that. Yeah. Because you, you can't, with, with just straight up video, if you're having like a video file that you watch somehow, um, you can't have this side-to-side -side motion or actual 3D. You'd need to have things being rendered Because there's no rendered live. environment. Like, we can move the camera, but without a rendered environment, there's no way to have you change your position inside of it without you being here, like, physically moving the camera every time you want to lean over. Yeah, all the work that makes it seem 3D, if it seems 3D right now to you, is happening in your brain. Like, your brain's doing all the computation, all the work. The computer has no idea. It just... It doesn't know. Yeah. Um, so it does seem though some people are working on that, right? If you had a full camera ball where you're getting a lot of information, then in theory you could be building a point cloud of the world around you, and you could make a 3D model of the world around you. Um, and yeah, even with this much information in theory, just the software is not it's not there. No. And I feel like even then, like that's not strictly video anymore like that is a rendered environment like you're making a rendered reconstruction um, as opposed to just taking like capture um, but we have been playing some recently especially in unity with mixing capture with rendered um, like 3d rendered environments and putting captured environments inside of them and like seeing how they can interact um, 
without having to have like what we would consider like a a faithful reproduction like if you took a scan of this room and then let the person walk around inside this room like can you mix captured environments um with things that are you know like blank environments or or like game environments or game maps that you would like walk into and then there would be video in them or things like that i don't know how far we are from that i'm actually hoping that this will be a big push towards getting the software to the point where you can just take video of a place, triangulate all the points, and get a good point cloud. Mm -hmm. Like I know, I think Jaunt. I don't have any secret inside information about what they're doing in terms of that. But um, from what they've said, they're working on these camera balls that right now are going to output a stereo pair of videos, like we are. But um, I think they have mentioned in like posts and places that they are trying to get all the information they would need to make an actual 3D model of the mm -hmm. world, and maybe. They have enough funding, I'm hoping, that they're going to work <laughs> on that side of things. If you guys haven't heard of John, um, you should look them up. They're a production company uh, in the Bay Area that's also working on um, stereo VR video. Um, they're actually shooting, I think it's a Civil War film? It might be World War II, something like that. There's, they're shooting like some a, sort of war film. a, a film It's right a now. short film. I think they're aiming for 10 minutes, and it's war stuff. <laughs> I don't know. It's I don't know what it gonna is. have explosions, and you're gonna be immersed in battles battle. or something. Right. It's gonna <laughs> be just like one of the many video games coming out, yeah. immersed in, in real explosions. So pretty much everything that exists in VR film, there's a lo there's a lot of spherical that is flat, and yeah. then there's a lot of stereo that is like this is, which well this will probably be more lazily stitched than some of the good stuff. So John <laughs> has some stuff with with. Pretty good stitching. Yeah, they, they have like the nice holders, so all their cameras are the same every time. Yes. And they, they seem to have a good workflow, maybe. Mm -hmm. I haven't actually used it, but. No, it's proprietary. It's proprietary. This is a problem with everybody, <laughs> except for us. Um, but stereo around and then flat up and down, which mm -hmm. you don't have to have it be that way. Um, no, with, an, with enough image interpolation, we could have perfect 3D in every direction, but then we'd have to be stitching live using computers that most people who even have headsets now are not going to own. There is that, but there's also that um, even with non-live stitching, even with a stereo pair of videos, you mm -hmm. don't have to, you could choose a different set of where things look stereo than 360 and then flat top and bottom. You could kind of warp all the flat to one point instead and have, if you really wanted, if you had a forward facing direction, and you wanted like the back of your head to be where th the 3D was bad. You could pick some other range of motion where maybe looking up like this is fine and looking down like this is also fine. And by fine, I mean in actual perfect stereo, which right now um, we don't have, but we could. We could make something where all this would be stereo and then as you turn your head towards the back, it's not gonna work. And if you went like that, it wouldn't work or if you went like that instead of like this, it, it wouldn't work. work. Right. I do know that like Total Cinema 360 who do, um, they're another video production company, they're out of New York. They do um, 2D spheres and then they composite like green screened objects into you know, larger um, 2D environments, spherical environments and things like that. Um, but they, I think that for the moment at least, they're not working on 3D. I'm um, trying to solve the problem of like making it all 3D, just trying to solve the problem of like making beautiful composites and things like that. Yeah, 3D is tricky and it's unclear how necessary it is. I mean, it is beautiful, like I do like the effect, but it's also, I feel like more of an eye strain than watching just a 2D video yes. in VR. Especially if you're gonna be yeah. doing any of that. Head tilt. <laughs> I don't know, we're shooting in, a, in 3D, maybe we should be shooting it in 2D. I'm not sure. It would be easier to work with if this were 2D. Well, we're doing both at once. We're not actually filming in 3D. We're filming right. in stereoscopic vision, which most people say 3D for a 3D movie, but it's not actually. It's not actually 3D. It's a long way from 3D. Can you compile all of the information here into an actual 3D model of this room? Your brain can obviously figure it out. So if our brain can do it, you'd think software could theoretically do it. We just mm -hmm. need to have software that's as smart as our brains. And our eyes get fooled all the time. We know how easily tricked our eyes are, but I feel like I have a good sense. If I were a computer, 
I, I'm looking around and coming up with a realistic 3D model of this space just off of what I'm seeing from this limited range of view. But I do feel like we're leading slightly, like, I get a much uh, better a parallax. Yeah, I get a much better sense of the the room size and shape with a mild quantity of parallax. Mm -hmm. So maybe we just need to have a you just need to like swing the camera around while the computer <laughs> learns what the room looks like. Yeah. Well, this is why cameras go on tracks. So in a normal flat film, there's so much the camera slowly moves along the track and that gives you much more 3D information than a still camera in stereo. Mm -hmm. Like, there's so much more information. A, a, a piece of film where you're looking at a static room and the camera's on a track is actually more 3D than a so-called 3D film, which mm -hmm. is just a stereo pair looking at a room. Right? Instead of just seeing this eye and this eye, when you're on a track, you're seeing that eye's view and then everything in between and that eye's view, and you're seeing even more. Yeah, which is... Actually, you get a good convincing 3D, if not 3D effect. I mean, it is 3D. That's one of the ways our brains get 3D information is from parallax and motion. Mm -hmm. So things like uh, Google Street Demo, mm -hmm. um, where it's basically Google Street View. It has a spherical camera, right? And there's a demo where you You're like go going along through Paris. and you can... Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's very quick, so it, it... Because you don't... You never see any one spot long enough to, like really examine whether or not it's in 3D, it sort of tricks you into seeing the buildings and the trees and everything as 3D because you're going by so quickly. You don't, you know, you don't yeah. get a chance to... You get all that parallax yeah. information. You get, it's just about information. So your brain gets the same information, it gets more information than you would just standing still. Yeah. Um, there's other demos. Um, the, we that was Street View in Paris. There's also the, f the short film, um, it's a spherical film. Is it called In Paris? Um, oh. The one with really nice stitching most of the time. <laughs> yeah, so they have. And there's also other demos, films where you're flying through the mountains on a skydiver yeah. or driving on a race car, which is lots of fun because you're driving in the race car and everything's moving by you. So you get you get 3D information. One of the things about non do 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 technology where <laughs> it's not so good for video yet and but it's also you need you need an outside tracking which yes. will exist for the DK2 and for project Morpheus it uh, for Google cardboard for anything that's like you put your phone in it yeah which is going to include the cardboard wearality those will be more video focused yeah video is going to be perfect you don't need to render it in real time yeah it's Presents. Ready for creepy presents time? Whoa. Creepy presents time. <laughs> creepy. Yeah, a little creepy. Let's, let's turn it off. <laughs>